yeah, nothing special. We could make our own solar kit, you know. We don't need we don't need this stuff. Watch this. All right. So, prototyping a solar kit. We're going to grab a cadmium cadmium sulfide cell. Live prototyping. R Jam. Jam? Jam? Like jam, homie, like that? I have no idea. All right, cadmium sulfide cell. We're going to put this in the negativo. It's on the right side. 5 volts ground. There we go. Negative. Where do I get my breadboards from? Well, let me tell you, Leon. I pay as little as humanly possible, but uh, I usually get 10 at a time. And the seller, because I get 10 at a time, they typically upgrade my shipping and send me decent ones. And maybe if you only get one at a time, you pay more, but um, I don't seem to have that issue. All right, so cadmium sulfide cell. Hey, I'm actually, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you RJM. I'm actually from, uh, I think the second or third roughest neighborhood in, uh, in Canada. So yeah. My neighborhood used to have the first and the last murders of the year, like ever all the time, every time. Um, okay, what did I want? I want some PNP transistor. So I have a uh, 2907 PNP. And I will stick that over here. Hopefully my uh, hard drive doesn't fill up because I am recording this as I am streaming. You know what I've, you Ryan, I will say, so far I have met more polite Americans than I bump into polite Canadians every day. So take that as you will. Got my Arduino plus plus bin. Um, need myself a five volt relay. What's this? Five volt relay. Dunzo. Who thinks I'm actually going to be able to prototype this uh, this circuit in a reasonable amount of time? Uh, this one needs access to 5 volts. There we go. David B, thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it. All right. Um, this guy has access, no, it needs access to, it's pulled low, it'll go high, might need an NPN, let me think, no, no, this'll do, okay. Uh, I can make you a schematic, I guess. I mean, I'm sort of in charge here, I suppose. All right, here's my thought. This is just going off the top of my head here. So you got your uh, relay here. 
and the relay has um, basically it goes like this uh, common so it comes in that's a common pin and then you have a normally closed pin and then you have a uh, normally open pin like that and on this side here you're gonna have a uh, VCC ground and signal pin alright so the signal pin here will go to a transistor which will be a PNP type. So PNP, uh, I try not to use PNP too much because they are uh, relatively unstable. Um, this one is a, I forget, uh, PNP 2907. So that would be a 2N2907. All right, that's a PNP, and you got uh, 5 volts here, like that. And then here we'll maybe have a bias resistor uh, and then our cadmium sulfide cell that's our CDS and then this will be ground like so and then uh, this guy here probably go to a resistor of unknown value to ground and so basically our bias resistor here will set uh, a certain bias that will be like our adjuster maybe that should be a pot so maybe it will go as a potentiometer okay so that'll be a pot this will be a resistor just to make sure we don't explode our um, our transistor by hitting it off. So what happens is this CDS cell will have kind of high resistance. Uh, this VCC can be tied here and ground can be tied, whoops, not there. Ground can be tied here. So our CDS cell is going to have relatively high resistance. We're going to flash a light onto it and then the resistance will uh, drop. As the resistance drop, current is going to increase here and the voltage will be allowed to pass through here. Once the voltage is allowed to pass through here, this here has a threshold of maybe, I don't know, 3.3 3 or something like that. And uh, once that hits the threshold, this module will click the relay from the NC over to the NO, uh, and then we are good to go. So that is the circuit. Um, put that pot in there. I don't know if we should use a potentiometer or just a bias resistor, but it does, doesn't matter. Put this here. I have a, uh, I sent a Patreon a uh, kit today because he requested it. And um, I still have this, uh, I still have this uh, pot that I was gonna send, but then I bent it, so that's why it's on the bench. Maybe I'll put this over here, like so. Oops. Jeez, my, uh... Maybe I over-sanitized my drinks there, guys. Alright. Let's see. Like so. I, have, I had a little wire link. There's a little wire link. I can go here to ground. All right, so that's the transistor side dealt with. So this will be our um, tensiometer over here that'll set the sensitivity of the um, CDS cell. And now we can just grab um, over here. So this will be our signal, like so. And that'll go to the uh, S pin, which is the top pin on this one.
Man, the Canadian dollar is crap. So David B sent a dollar ninety nine. I assume that's U.S. dollars, um, because the chat revenue it says I made two dollars and eighty cents. So the Canadian dollar is garbage right now. Which explains why everything on eBay is so friggin' expensive. All right, I'll use this guy instead. Grab this, pop that onto the S, and then we'll grab positive and negative. We'll grab this gray and this burgundy, like so. Um, uh, oh yeah, just just pause and neg like that, and pop that on positive and negative like that. All right, now we don't want this to turn on right away. So we're gonna plug this in and make sure that our CDS cell is biased correctly. So this is actually on, so I need to re-bias, I need to add resistance. Yeah, do you guys like it or because now you know now's the time usually in the comment section you guys have the benefit of being able to uh, fast forward no oh, that's not good I can't bias this enough it's still connected to ground okay that's, we need to buy it bias it some more uh, collector max 600 milliamps yeah we don't need oh yeah I didn't put a resistor but uh, yeah that's fine 600 you know we only need enough to send the signal um, these things are actually self-contained they have uh, their own transistor and uh, freewheeling diode on the in on the uh, on the inside so I'm not not too concerned about that yeah so right now we're sending a uh, voltage here uh, is this going to ground? It is not. Okay, so let's put a resistor to ground. Let's put a 10k to ground. And we'll also try a 10k. I'll redraw the schematic with uh, the actual. Alright, so we're going to put a 10k resistor to ground on the emitter pin. Okay, so now there's no way, you know, we're going to get milliamps to ground, basically. That's good. Then we'll also use a 10K to bias the potentiometer, which will bias the CDS. Come on. Heh. <laughs> we can also put the CDS in a voltage divider situation. We could do that. Uh, PNP, yeah, PNP needs ground. So we'll go take the CDS cell out, put this 10K over here, put this 10K over here, get the CDS cell. And then we're going to put this potentiometer to bias. Maybe more up like that. And let's see. Get out. There we go. Uh, since the base circuit does not connect to plus five volts, um, it's, uh, well, the thing is the CDS cell will have a high resistance and it will come down in resistance as we add as we as we add light to it so that is too much resistance now in the ground path what happens if we give it light nope still not getting a on signal 
10k too much. What happens if we just ground that? Because a uh, PNP transistor needs a ground to turn on. Get in there. Okay, so you see, 10k in uh, series with the uh, CDS cell is enough. But now we want a dividable voltage or a adjustable resistance. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So again, this turns on. Okay. Uh, looks like we're almost there. This is dim now. So if we add a little bit more resistance to this, we should be able to get it to turn off. I don't know if you noticed, but that LED was super dim. All right, let's add another 10K. Uh, and our bias, our pot over here. And let's see what we got now. Ah, still. Dang, damn it. Still too much. Hmm. Okay. Maybe in. You know what? This is silly. Because this um, because this relay actually has its own drive circuit, we don't even need we don't even need to do that. So, what's the resistance of this CDS cell? Because we can just grab five volts like that over here, and then divide the voltage with uh, this potentiometer. this way make this even simpler look at that and then this should go to ground on the middle pin pin 17 all right so now let's see what happens here We need to check voltage on here. Um, this guy over here. Uh, do I have crop clips? I think I have some crop clips somewhere. over here. Oops, making everything fall over. All right, let's grab this. And then we need to poke inside here. Uh, this guy here. And then our negativo, like so. You know, I really need to buy more uh, jumper wires because I keep running out. Oh, here they are. And our negativo. So let's see. What do we have? So we have uh, 3.8 volts. When we turn this on, we have 5 volts. So what we need to do is to turn this until we have less than the turn on, nope, oh, the other way. There we go. So now this relay is off, right? So that little LED is not lit. And then if we do this, Oh, come on. You're so close.
There we go. So when you light it, it turns on. Do you, do you guys see that little red light? So nothing there. You can do it. There. Red light's on, red light's off. There we go. So there you go, a solar relay. And I think this is the minimum viable components. You can actually do the math and put in a, um, a resistor instead of this pot, but this pot makes it adjustable. So this little, um, this little circuit here, this board, takes care of the rest of that for you. And this thing is running out of uh, juice there, but if I just, oh, almost, maybe if I bend it more this way. It's so close. No, it really needs uh, the extra boost of light. And if uh, this resistor was not a 50K, if it was, uh, let's say, a, um, I don't know, a uh, 5K pot, it'd probably be a lot easier to adjust it, right, so that it works. So there you go. If you want to make a solar-powered relay, you should do a voltage divider instead. And the voltage divider circuit is actually far simpler than that because all you really need to do is you have your uh, plus 5 volts here. Am I on in shot? Yeah. Okay, 5 volt rail. Uh, then come down here, you have your CDS cell. And then you have a pot. Um, so let's say like so and this this will just open in the air like so um, and I will say probably like a 5k pot well, maybe a 10 turn like a trimmer pot so this one you leave not connected this one here you put down to ground like so. And then on the other side here you've got your uh, relay module. Um, and then you have your signal which you then tap here. And then you have your ground that goes to here. And there's your module. And then in your module you're gonna have three connections, so it's these three at the end there, and you're going to have a COM, and you're going to have a normally connected, and then you're going to have a normally open. And there you go. I think that's the minimum viable for this. That's not actually too bad. And actually this um, this relay, if you wanted to build your own, it would just basically be, um, so you got the 5 volts, the signal, and the ground. You'd have the 5 volts in, goes through a, um, let's see, there's the coil of your relay with the same connections as before and like that so that would be common normally open normally closed and then you would have here your signal going to a transistor from the 5 volt rail NPN and then down to ground uh, like so yeah, there's your ground rail there. And then you would have a freewheeling diode somewhere in the circuit, like that. And some proper resistance for the rest. But yeah, that's, uh, that's basically what you can do for that. So yeah. So you can actually do this with a relay, uh, NPN transistor, a couple of resistors, a um, diode, and cadmium sulfide cell a 10 turn pot 
and that's it. So this would be the minimum amount of components if you didn't want to get a, um, a module like this, but I would recommend the module because they're so cheap anyways. I think you can get 10 for like two bucks, maybe once COVID is over. So yeah, if the pot wiper goes to ground, the CDS cell will need to handle vo full VCC. Yeah, this is, uh, this is very true. You can put another resistor there, but um, minimum viable, not like fit to envelope design or whatever. But yes, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, CDS cell will have to remain uh, resistant enough. And I think on full sunlight, these CDS cells will drop to something like uh, um, 60 ohms, something like that. They have a variable resistance. So here we go. We'll check. By the way, I love these ANEG meters. I just wish they were as cheap as how, how much I paid for them all the time. Okay, so here, just in the dark, it's got like... Uh, seven and a half K ohms of resistance. If I pop it up to the light here, whoops. I got this, uh, this meter, I guess it was on clearance or something on Amazon. I don't know, some seller was trying to dump them maybe, but I paid $18 shipped for them and I can't find them, that's Canadian, and I can't find them for anywhere less than like almost 30 bucks. So yeah, basically full sun, you're going down, yeah, maybe close to 60 ohms uh, resistance. You got 77 ohms and this thing is basically touching the light bulb on the side there. So yeah, on a five volt supply, I think you'd be okay. But uh, yeah, obviously you should put a resistor to protect it. I'm just, you know, I was just prototyping here. Uh, I think the Canadian dollar is 40%. So I think it's a dollar 40 for every uh, American dollar. So um don't really know how that works out. Let's see. Uh USD to CAD. I mean CAD to USD. So it looks like uh 71 cents. Canadian, I mean 71 cents American for every Canadian dollar. Oh my god, this new uh, Windows update is terrible. So 18. Oh my god. Why are you so terrible? 18 times. What? Uh, times. 0.71 uh, yeah 13 bucks damn you're like pretty much right on the money will we etch the PCB uh, no I don't think so um, I don't have any etchant I should maybe order some maybe order some etchant but uh, I actually need to look at some tutorials on where to store um, ferric chloride for when it goes, uh, yeah, because, I mean, look, this house is mine and my wife's, and neither my end of it or her end of it do I want to damage, you know what I mean? Um, no, the they didn't manage to mess up the calculator, they managed to mess up my uh, start menu. I It took me a long time to prune all the uh, Windows 10 stuff out of the start menu, or sorry, the search bar now. And now the search bar is like massive. It's like, come on. It's, I just need to type in it. I don't need you to pop open an entire window for me to search. Which I find interesting, though, that um, Windows 10 search feature is now, like, that's the main, I don't even use Start Menu anymore. I just use the search for everything. Uh, no, I have not started working with the ESP32 cam. They are still sitting right here. I am excited to get started with this, but I am working on a tutorial on how to use the um, ESP8266, and so I'm gradually working my way up to working with these guys. 
Uh, of course, once I have the 266 working properly, I'm obviously going to uh, upload some, um, like some previously, some some programs that other people have made for these things. But yeah, uh, it's the AN uh, 8008. I think the 8009 is better, but I I don't know. I have the 8008 and it's really nice. So yeah, no, I have not done the ESP32 cam. Um, I've been, uh, well, we have our pool is leaking. It's been leaking since last year. And uh, if you're thinking that I'm uh, richy rich with a pool, I'm not. In fact, we're spending an incredible amount of money for something that we don't really use. But anyways, I went outside and I fiberglass the uh, pool today. So that was today's mission. So I've got stuff to do around the house. It sucks. I don't think, uh, you know, anyways, long, I don't want to complain, but yeah. Oh, I agree, Leon. Uh, sometimes they are on sale at Banggood. They are on sale in Banggood right now. And you guys can use my uh, link. I think I put it in the description. Uh, if you want, want to use my affiliate link on it, but uh, it's still like $24 plus $5 shipping Canadian. So. I may have forgotten to put the affiliate link in my in the description, but I mean, you guys know where to find it. It's on like every video. I find it, I find it pretty cool. I've got like two or three, I'm guessing regular viewers, who order from my affiliate link on Banggood. So every couple months, I get like three dollars or something. It's it's amazing. It's like free three dollars. Yeah, never ever, ever buy a pool. Like, honestly, when we bought this house, um, the pool we thought was a plus, but it doesn't matter because all the houses in our price range were trash except for this one. We had to move a little bit away from where we wanted to be to get this house. Um, but yeah, I'll never buy a house with a pool ever again. I mean, unless you're looking to buy my house, and in which case, uh, yeah, you definitely want a pool. But <laughs> other than that, no. I mean, I work on cars for a living, or I used to work on cars full time as a living, and they're built like garbage. I'll have to tell you, um, they're honestly they're built down to a price, but that pales in comparison to how shitty pool equipment is built. It is built so poorly. Uh, we have an in-ground pool. If we had an above-ground pool, we would not have a pool anymore. The deal with a uh, in-ground pool is that if you want to get rid of it uh, because it's so close to the house it costs the same to fill it up than to rip out all of the components and put all brand new components in so basically buying a new pool and removing an in-ground pool are the exact same cost because if you do it wrong if you remove if you like abandon the pool incorrectly um, you can actually create a uh, sinkhole and it'll pull your foundation in so yeah we were told uh, in no uh, no mincing of words that to refurbish this pool completely to its brand new state and to fill it up and forget that it ever existed are the same price so yeah and they, they told us every year someone tries to do it themselves without engineering uh, drawings and all this stuff and every year someone's house gets swallowed up because we have a big uh, freeze thaw cycle here so someone's house gets swallowed up and uh, the insurance does not cover it because they don't cover stupidity so yeah we've got like a lot of money sunk into this house we still owe a lot on it I wouldn't want to have to pay back this mortgage while trying to build another house to replace the one that we screwed up. You know what I mean? Ooh, that sucks, uh, hey Bleski. So uh, our pool is just uh, has a vinyl liner, but it's like time to replace the liner. So I think like our neighbors got theirs done and I think it, it's like eight grand or something.
Oh yeah, it's insane. We spend, um, we probably spend about 300 bucks a year in chemicals. And don't forget, in Canada, the swimming season is kind of like late May uh, all the way until maybe August. So like really, so let, let's let say, let's say um, mid-May to mid-August. So it's May, June, July, August. Yeah, three months, 300 bucks in chemicals. And our, since I said our electricity is super expensive here, I think we pay like 300 bucks a month on electricity to run the pool. And the thing is, if you don't, run the pump that often then you're gonna save like 200 bucks on your electric bill but you're gonna have to spend 200 bucks more a month in chemicals to keep the damn thing from becoming an absolute pond what I'm saying is never buy a pool just just don't do it I wish I had sharks at least then the pool would be interesting I have a uh, I have two aquariums um, which cost me a lot less, but um, probably gonna get rid of them because uh, I'm supposed to be doing electronics projects around the aquariums, but I haven't gotten to it. I have a long, I have a list. You should. I have a Google Sheets with um, a bunch of project ideas. Which, by the way, if uh, you guys have, as viewers want to suggest projects uh, for real, you can uh, either send me an email or um, put it in a comment section somewhere, and you can let me know what you want me to build. But anyways, I got a project list that's so huge. I don't really have time, like I don't have the, the energy to make uh, this many videos. And in fact, the way I'm set up here, I can't really record all the time because I have a tenant who likes making a crap ton of noise. And so, yeah, I can only film when that tenant is at work or sleeping and it's very unpredictable. So, yeah. Enough first world problems though. Um, I will take some questions from you guys if you have questions that are bothering you I will answer them and uh, once we're done answering questions I'm going to probably edit some videos or maybe film some other ones I really appreciate you guys stopping in for the live streams as well I feel like uh, more and more I'm not just talking to myself and also, I love feedback, so if you guys like this time slot, I'll do more at this time slot. Yeah, so we, we rent a room, but, uh, like, to somebody, it's someone we know. But, um, yeah, it's more like a room and a half, two rooms type thing. Um... Do you make your own mini grabber and alligator leads. Yeah, I, um, so I don't know what you mean by mini, this thing, this mini grabber is actually a video coming out soon. I've actually filmed it, I haven't uh, done it. This actually, uh, I saw this on Pile of Stuff's channel. So if you're not subscribed to Pile of Stuff, go check them out. Um, the alligator leads, yes, I do make my own. I've bought a set on, on eBay, uh, like a 10 kit. And um, the problem is they're terrible, so I had to fix them up, and the amount of time it took me to fix them up, might as well just make your own. And so there it is. So this is crimped over and soldered. This is just uh, silicone wire. If you're buying wire, I highly suggest silicone wire. Uh, small J-hook leads. Um, yeah, I do have a video somewhere. Let me get back to you on that one because I, uh, I have like 200 videos. I have to go find which ones I have. Um, the J-hook leads, I think you mean these guys. Get in there. I need to organize my leads, but these guys. And these guys I did not make myself. These guys I bought them pre-built like this from eBay. We got that little hooky. 
and they finish in a banana. Now I'll tell you something about um, banana plugs. Have a good one, Leon. Um, you see these guys here? You see how they're a little uh, cage? See that? They're a cage just freely rotating around a post. Um, do not buy these. Don't buy these if you're going to make your own leads. Um, the problem is, if you look at this one, this one I had to decommission. If you can see there's solder there, and there's solder there for a reason, it's because the cage was too stiff on certain uh, multimeters and so you weren't making good connection. So I highly recommend if you are getting um, leads or uh, banana, these are called four millimeter banana jacks by the way, um, get this kind. You see how it's like a folded piece of steel? I don't know if you're able to tell, but it's literally it just looks like a folded over piece of steel. So this is a this is integral to the whole connector. So uh, you do want this guy here instead of the cage type. These guys can handle a little bit less current, but I mean you won't handle any current if you can't get a good connection. So yeah, I really recommend building your own. If you buy silicone wire, that's, um, you don't actually, for, um, I built these with a little bit thicker wire. I think this is 18. Yeah, 18 gauge. But mostly you can use like 22 gauge. But if you buy wire that's intended for use on uh, remote control cars, you get, like, look how flexible these leads are. So these are silicone leads. This one here is really thick though, 14. You don't need 14 gauge. But see, like, look how dangly this, this stuff is. It's very, uh, very dangly, high quality. Look at this stuff. This is PVC. Look, you can't even make it do a loop. So this one's stiff. This one is, like, super floopy. See, look, it just does its own loop like that. This one here, it's, like, stiff and rigid. So you definitely want silicone wire. get the PVC stuff from uh, computer power supplies and it's just like look how stiff that is compared to this you know I'll check my video list I, I know where I can find you so I'll check my video list I did make videos on um, making these things are super simple and actually the only trick I'll have to show you is for, put this sheath on first like you have to put this plastic on the wire before you actually solder and to move it, what I do is I open the alligator clip like that, and I pinch it between my fingers. So it's actually like grabbing me right now. And then you can slide it back like that, and it comes off. Because if you have it closed like this, you see how that angle, this, this space here is super big. If you press it, see how the space is smaller? So you want to open it, let it pinch your fingers, and then you can more easily slide this up and over like that and there you go so that's really the only tip I have for you and these guys 18 wire gauge this is probably good for uh, a good uh, dozen amps for a, a few like a minute or so by comparison the um, these are the eBay ones and they're absolutely terrible. I had to open them up and solder them all. Just absolutely horrendous. See, I had to solder all of them. And so if uh, if we're out of questions, ooh, uh oh, there we go, focus. If we are out of questions, I think I'm going to call it a day.
and uh, make sure to let me know in the comments if uh, if you enjoyed this time slot or if you prefer the slightly later time slot the slightly later one I would just be uh, starting streaming either around now or in uh, in about 45 minutes so thanks for joining me I know it was a little bit of riffraff um, changing topics and whatever but uh, I'll probably split up those topics into different videos oh that's uh all right chemical if you want me to answer it on stream I can I can wait too it's not it's not a big deal it's not like I have anything to do I'll just go edit or something but um, yeah I really appreciate you guys uh, stopping off here if you have any project ideas if you have any feedback for the channel let me know in the comments below uh, I want to thank Bill was it? Where are you? Oh, would you look at that? Huh. I didn't realize I can actually um, I can <laughs> insert an ad. I'm not going to give you guys an advertisement. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. Uh, David B. I want to thank you for being our only super chatter today. You didn't even put a message for me to repeat. You know? Crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, if don't don't worry, I'm I'm not in the habit of putting ads in the middle of the videos. Sounds good, RJM. So have a good evening, guys. And uh, I think we're gonna try to do another stream on Sunday night. Maybe I'll have one before then. But I have a foam airplane that I want to finish putting together and uh, test fly. So that is perfect streaming material. So hope you have a you guys have a good night. Make sure to check out some of my YouTube friends, Another Maker, Pile of Stuff, Junk from Work, uh, Gadget Reboot. Those are the the main ones. But I mean, if you want more suggestions for um, electronics or other YouTubers, let me know in the comments below, and maybe I'll make a video explaining to you guys who I watch on YouTube and why. Hope you guys have a good evening. Thanks for watching.